Father God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for the service of God. We recognize, Lord, you as a way maker. And we recognize you that you are God all by yourself. And Lord, you are full of compassion. And we pray that you will just minister to your people as a way maker. That you as a the problem solver. My God, solve our problems. Deal with our issues when only you can. Lord, we have physicians and we have therapists and we have psychologists. Oh God, who can do so much and no more. But God, you can touch us where no one else can touch us. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us even now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord. God bless you, brethren. And thank you, Sister Maxine, for um, you know, your moderating so far and the, the, the blessing that we have received so far. Thank you, Minister Mel, for ministering that song. And uh, on, and with our understanding that God is indeed our way maker. And so I just want to continue on the theme that Jesus is indeed our savior. He is the savior of the world. And our theme for the past few Sundays is sharing your faith. And this is helping us how to share our faith and also we're recognizing as a church, we believe, which is our vision statement, that every soul matters. Every soul matters to God. Every soul matters to us. And so we want to just continue worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So our objective this morning is to catch God's passion. Our objective is to catch God's passion for, for souls. And we want us as a church to, to, to be bought into this and have that understanding that having God's passion for those without Christ is very important. And also to renew our vision for family and friends and to provide an understanding. So this morning, we have, um, for the past few Sundays, we have been looking at um, simple tools that we use to share the gospel but now and but sometimes you will have to be using the scriptures so for the next few Sundays we will be just looking at some of the scriptures that you might want to employ as you share the gospel of Jesus Christ and um, and the next thing that we want is that we are hoping that at the end of this training on the Sunday morning, that you'd want to do further practical training in soul winning. Now, um, I'm going, we're going to be looking at this scripture here um, from John 3, 16. And it says, for God so loved the world. And everybody knows this song, even from you're a child, right? From you were out of the womb, your mother start teaching you this song uh, or this um, verse of scripture. For God so loved the world. And I want you in your homes with your families. You don't have to unmute your phone. Just say it in the home. For God, it's on the screen. Just repeat with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a scripture that everybody should know. And so, in fact, we will be looking at that. Now, I want you to take note that that scripture has start off with the word for. And that word for means it is connecting a previous statement with what is about to be said. So what, so if you note in first St. John 3 verse 14 to, to 15, it speaks of Moses who had to raise, he had to raise the, 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 a, a, a serpent, a brazen serpent, so that the people could be healed. So if you read Numbers 21 from verse 4 to 9, you will find in that passage of scripture that Moses, um, because the people were rebellious, because they were ignoring God's command, God sent uh, fiery serpents to bite them, venomous serpents to bite these Israelites. And as a result of them, some of them were being sick, some were dying, and God said to to, to Moses, make a brazen serpent and hold it up on a pole and whomever look on it 
will be saved, will be healed. And notice if, so the word for in the scripture, for God so loved the word, is connecting this passage of scripture in St. John 3 verse 16 with the story about Moses that Jesus shared with, the, with Nicodemus. Because the story just before John 3 16 was about Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night and what happened was that he was asking what is it to be born again so Jesus was explaining to him and ultimately shared with him that as Moses lifted up the serpent so shall the son of man be lifted up which was speaking of his death on the cross and so um, and so that story about Moses, as I shared with you, is really about the serpent that was raised up. Now, you need to understand that the, the, the story before speaks of Nicodemus and notice that Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. So he should know some of these things, you see, but he still was asking and Jesus shared with him that as Moses lifted up the serpent, so shall the son of man be. But notice from Nicodemus' mindset, Nicodemus' mindset was that he had to work to be righteous. He has to earn righteousness. That's what he used to because he was one of the chief uh, um, ruler in this um, in the Sanhedrin council. And so he was well versed in the in the Old Testament law and, and, and the, the Torah. And as a result of that, he would have known about what happened to Moses in the in the wilderness and the people of Israel. And so um, this was an act of faith. So if you notice that Jesus now is bringing Nicodemus' thought to a new way of thinking. He, Nicodemus, is used to doing the works of righteousness just and, and earning it by things he does. But what Jesus is saying to you, all you have to do, just as you know, in, in Moses' day, all the people had to do was to believe that they would be saved and healed just by looking, right? No working, no works of righteousness. All, all they had to do was to look and believe. So Jesus was shifting his focus and his mindset to a new way, a revolutionary way of thinking. And this is about believing, having faith in Jesus Christ. And so you will notice then that the scripture goes on now to say, for God so loved the world. So now that we understand that the four connect us with the previous statement that Jesus made in that same passage of scripture to what is now being said, now we need to understand who is God in this particular scripture. God here. So when you're explaining the scripture to someone, for God so loved the world, these are some of the, the, the nuggets that you need to bring out. That um, God, who is God? He is Jehovah God. He is the Father. And he gave his son, Jesus Christ. So even though you have three persons in the Godhead, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but in this context, the God here is speaking of Jehovah God, and he's the one who sent his son um, to die for our sins. And so you want to also share with them, how does this, who is this God? God is love. You don't have to go into too much detail as to who God is, because God, if you start talking about God, you, the, 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 you, if, if you have a scroll as large as the heavens, you could not complete a description of who God is. And so what you want to come out here is that God is love. And how does he demonstrate his love? One, by sending his son to die on the cross so that the penalty of our sins can be paid for. And so that's why he, that's how he's demonstrated his love. And also, Jesus did not die for good people. <laughs> And this is what you need to understand because some people don't get this. We would put down our life and we would say, wow, you know, that man was good. Stephen Lawrence was a good man and I would put my life on the line for him. Or that, that, that religious leader was a powerful man and I will do anything for him because he's good. But look at what Jesus does. Jesus died for an unworthy sinner. He died for the murderer. He died for the homosexual. He died for the pedophile. He died for the liars. He died for the unbelievers. 
Jesus died for we would put our lives on the line for someone who is good, but Jesus died for the unworthy sinner. So these are nuggets you want to come out. Powerful scripture. This is a scripture you need to memorize um, from memory. And Christ died for us. And the scripture says in Romans 5, 8, Christ died for us while we were sinners. Not when we were made righteous friends. It was when we were sinners, he died. So this kind of love is an unconditional love that was extended to people who spurned Jesus. So we have the atheists, we have the agnostics who are speaking against Jesus and the people in this society today say, oh, I don't believe in God and I don't think a loving God would do this and so I don't accept him because my mother died and so on. But this God, he gave his son to die for us, an unconditional love, and he did this even for those who spurned on him, those who hated him, those who scorned him, those who speak against him. He extended this love to them. So Philippians 2 verse 6 and 7 says, although he was the form of God and equal with God, he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, putting on human flesh. Jesus was, is the son of God. He was, his residence was in heaven, but he came down from heaven, make himself, humble himself as a man, put on the form of a servant so that he may save us. <laughs> and it's not that we were good <laughs> that, you know, he came to save us. And so, here we, we, we continue to look at the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only. What is this world we are talking about? The Greek word for this world is cosmos. And cosmos is speaking of the universe, the orderly universe that is created by the intelligent God. In, in real sense, what this is speaking of is the people on the earth. So when you speak of, it's not, it means then it cuts across race, it cuts across backgrounds, it cuts across creed because he died for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So for God, the four connect us to what was happening before that just as Moses lifted up the serpent, so must the son of man be lifted up, meaning in the wilderness, the people, all they need to do was believe that the serpent would heal them and they would be healed. No working for it, not getting up, not doing anything, just believing. So Jesus is bringing them now to say in this context, um, you now, all you need to do is believe in me and that brings salvation to your heart. So you're saying, the, and he did this for the world, the cosmos. He did it for the entire world, all the inhabitants of the world, irrespective of your race, your color, and your creed. Now he gave. What, who is, why does he give? God gave. And you need to understand, we, if we were to... If, if you go to the shop and get you give, give your money to purchase a, a, a drink or whatever, or some food item, then they give you back something in exchange. You buy it. But when you give something, it's a gift. And all the person needs to do is receive or reject it. And that's all there is about this salvation message. That all you have to do when the gospel is presented to you and we share with you that Jesus saves, that he gives eternal life, this is a gift. And once you get this as a gift, you just need to receive it. So God giving, God is a giving God. Giving is a characteristic of God. You want that to come out of this scripture as you share it. For God so loved the world that he gave that he gives a gift and he did not give a gift that was cheap. He gave the life of his only begotten son and, and he gave this life. He has given us the life of his son. And not just that, but he, because he's a giving God, he gives us the providence the daily providence that we need. So the seasons, you notice you have apple season, you have all the seasons, the autumn. He gives us the different um, seasons in terms of fruits, in terms of um, the, 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 the 
atmosphere and all and the climate and all of that he gives to us and the scripture went on to say in james 1 17 all good gifts comes from god he is the source of all gifts and not just that but he gave his only begotten and notice that only begotten comes from the greek word monogenes which occurs nine times in the new testament and what it is simply saying is that this marks Jesus uniquely different from any other person on earth or in the heaven. He is the only begotten of the Son. And notice also that he said, for God so love, so love, meaning it emphasized the level and the degree to which he loves us. And this degree is manifested in giving the only begotten Son that he has and just put to the people what if you had your only son and you had to give up this son because you love someone else or for the sake of some cause would you do that i'm sure they wouldn't but god so love us to that the word so in the greek means a degree to which the depth to which he loves the world of all race and color and creed that he gave the only thing that was dear to his heart which was the begotten son of god which is jesus christ and so we come now to the real point of the matter which is believe now what he's saying and that's why he used the word the connective word which was for to connect you to what happened in the wilderness with moses that when moses lifted up the serpent all the people had to do was to believe on him and they would be healed they would be saved now jesus is saying the greek understanding of this pisteo which means you trust you have a trusting disposition you trust god for who he is you trust him for trust him for what he will do for you that's what this belief means so you're trusting god but also the greek understanding and even the hebrew understanding of this word believe is not just that's why it says and whosoever believeth on him that believeth is the present continuous tense which means you start believing today but you continue to believe after that that's what it means you believe now and continue to believe afterwards and so the word believe there is saying whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting meaning you trust him now you have confidence in who he is in his identity as the son of god and what he stands for holiness righteousness but also the greek understanding understand that believe also has an attachment to it of complying that's why the scripture in james says faith without works is dead so even though you trust him to receive salvation even though you believe in him and have faith in him and that's all you need to receive the salvation and the free gift of eternal life you need to continue to believe and comply with his commands and his words and in so doing you will be saved and you will Men, you will inherit the eternal life that is due to you i say to you brethren right now saving faith has a connection of trusting in him and believing in him so if you believing and complying with what he says so as i close this session i want you together with me to repeat now the uh the scripture john 3 16 which says and we together say that for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth believe now and continue to believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life a life that will never end what a god that we serve a god that gives us a free gift of eternal life that all we need to do to receive this is simply simply believe on him even as the people looked at that brazen serpent and they were healed so shall you be saved and be healed if you only look to jesus and accept him or the scripture says for as many as believe him to them gave he the right to become the sons of god may god bless your souls as you continue to worship the lord 
in the beauty of holiness. God bless you. Over to our moderator. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for that um, leading, that teaching, that guidance. And, you know, it's so, so simple as you use the word out of the Bible verse, St. John 3, verse 16. And what I got out of it is so much. And a new word is cosmos, which means word, world. And it was any, not any gift, but it was an expensive gift that, you know, God gave us. So we should recognize that we have received him. But there are others outside there that need to accept him. And it's our duty to go forth as the harvest is ripe, but the labors are few. God bless you for those words. God bless you, Pastor. We're now